she likes, what she likes And she could put it all on you, baby If you bout that life, bout that life Because you don't got time to choose it Hey tribe, it's Kia from Heritage93 and I'm back at it again with the throwback long nail care content filmed earlier in time. As you can see, the girls are super long here thanks to all that product testing for the new nail care treats. But interestingly enough, this one was filmed around the time where I stopped intentionally applying the nail care treats. And you may be wondering, why on earth would I do that? Well, after achieving the breakthrough length I was super proud of for the very first time with these nail goodies, despite all of the physical work I was doing, I thought, you know, the testing phase wouldn't be complete without seeing what happens if I completely stop using the nail treats just to note the effects of that nail care neglect. Of course, the girls eventually started showing signs of the shambles coming in in a few weeks time, but we'll see more of that in this nail care series. But for now, behold, Exhibit A, Awkwardly Mended Thumb. But with this current polish fail, I decided to do some damage control to give the girls the fresh start they deserved. Ready to watch the bounce back? Let's get started. First, I'll simply remove the polish from both hands using acetone. Pretty strong stuff, and if I were to do this again, I would probably use the soy nail polish remover I mentioned in that one video, but more on why later in this one. So far, this is what we got, and now I'll take care of my thumbnail. Actually, this one needs some help too. These side splits used to be so annoying, especially when you're trying to flourish. Speaking of flourish, once upon a time, the undersides of my nails looked so good and nourished, but once I stopped tending to them, they grew tired of me and my nail treat tees. So in this video, I definitely gotta uncross that. So yeah, this is what happens when I stopped giving my nails the nourishment they needed and you haven't seen anything yet. For now, I'm gonna remove all the hubbub from my tired thumb using the acetone and this convenient pump bottle again. Now this is with typical use and all, but it wasn't working how I envisioned it. Granted, there were a lot of layers for the acetone to work through. So I decided to pour some acetone in this glass bowl here and soak my natural nails in it. Desperate times, desperate times. And it kind of worked a little bit. Actually, no, my nail looks like it's being casted for The Mummy Returns yet again. Now, what we're seeing is the shredded silk wrap beginning to disintegrate, but since it's nowhere near ready to completely come off, I'll just try to soak my thumb a little more. But as you can see, the process of removing this silk wrap was a complete struggle, especially since I had to repeatedly soak my thumb in the acetone to get it to budge, which is why now in present times, I can more easily recommend a soy-based nail polish remover to remove your glue on silk wrap. The ingredients in the soy nail polish remover penetrated the glue wrap so well that it came off in one clean piece and not in cold, wet, annoying pieces of struggle. Case in point, I was stuck peeling my way off the soaking nail and silk wraps for at least 20 minutes. Note that this is the second layer of glued on silk wrap that I am still attempting to remove from my nail. And to make things worse, as I was soaking my thumbnail, the strength of the acetone got significantly weaker as the acetone's chemicals continuously broke down the bonds that held the glue to the silk wraps. It was a lot. But eventually the silk wrap comes off and you can see that I have multiple breaks in my nails. It was really bad. And this nail has gone through a lot so far in this video, but as weak as this nail may have been by being repeatedly soaked in the acetone, I found it really interesting that my thumb was still able to bend like this, despite having a full break at the halfway mark and pretty big side splits on both sides. Basically, this tells me that thumb wasn't going down without an ongoing fight and I do stand. Now eventually, once dried, I just ripped the cracked and replaced the top half off like so. Just to get rid of it, it was time. Time for the top half, I honestly wasn't ready to get rid of the entire thumb, but my thumbs, as you can see, used to go through it with these side splits. It was so bad, but I'm gonna file my nails with a one-way swipe with a few files to get them back to square. I started with a medium grit file, but I quickly grabbed for the diamond file because I needed backup. Plus, the diamond file really helps to straighten out the sides of my nails with balanced hard pressure without being coarse and damaging. 
So now as I'm finishing up filing this thumb, I notice that I have one pink thumb due to the staining of the pink acetone and another thumb that looks green on camera, like Cosmo and Wanda in disguise. But at any rate, I'm gonna cut my greenish thumb to match the length efforts of the pinkish one and then file them to be even and square with rounded corners. But that staining though, that staining really got my thumbnail and my entire hyponychium but that staining was absolutely no match against a wholesome hand washing. Natural thumb colors restored. May this be a reminder of how absorbent our nails and skin really are. So definitely make sure you're feeding them good stuff. Now that these two are okay, well, for now anyway, I wanna skip over to my right hand which has experienced some wear and tear. Clear outlines on my nail's edges lets me know that it's time to file my nails back just a smidge until the translucent nail isn't there. As you can see, I'm going back in with the diamond file once again and filing off that clear edge one nail at a time. Ah yes, this is much better. And now that both hands are doing a lot better, I'll go back and take care of my cleaned up thumbnails by first sealing both of those cracks with the brush on nail glue. I do this by opening the crack, brushing the glue inside, closing the crack, and then painting over the crack for a second seal. Then I like to secure the crack with my trusty silk wrap to help my nails grow out a little bit longer before I cut them. That was my vision anyway. And to do this, I liked using the curved scissors to cut the wrap into place. It's a closer and cleaner cut than any other scissors I've tried before. You know, I usually apply silk wraps vertically to fit over my entire nail plate, but I wanted to apply them horizontally this time because they can be a pain to remove from the rest of the unharmed nail as we've seen earlier. And you know, I've learned a lot about these silk wraps and they've saved the girls many times. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you want an everything you need to know about silk wraps type tutorial in the future. So now that my thumbs are all nice and wrapped, I'm gonna brush on the nail glue and watch the silk wrap disappear. It's super satisfying. Next, I'm gonna rub the last little bits of crusts from up under my nails, cause that was a lot. And then follow that up with a few treatments that I've wanted to try on camera. Starting off with that base and top coat from Pacifica. This one is seven free and finishes shiny. Then I'm using a nail therapy formula, which was the Then 3 Free formula to paint on the undersides of my nails like so. Also, I found that nourishing the undersides with good oils and then sealing the nails with a layer of clear coat of any kind helps to keep your nails stronger overall, but also helps to keep the undersides clean since dirt tends to cling to uneven or ridgy surfaces more easily than smooth surfaces, especially after you wash your hands. And now that the nail plate and the undersides of my nails are shining, I went ahead and grabbed this nail treatment from Julep as well. I applied it under my nails on my other hand and admired the shine. So far, so good. Okay, okay, the girls are really starting to come together and that ending result is always worth that initial effort, but we can't celebrate just yet. You know, I was experimenting, so I went ahead and painted that oxygen treatment to the top of my nails over that initial base coat. But spoiler alert, maybe I should have put that nail treatment directly on my nail. I don't know, I didn't have the best results with this one in the long run, but of course, more on that later. For now, we'll just focus on the current glow, right? Because after that, I wanted to apply a top coat to seal everything in and complete this revitalizing manicure. Ah, this is much better than before, as the girls are hydrated, shiny, and brighter with a pink tint of softness. I definitely felt more confident despite having to let go of that thumbnail, cause girl, that was just not it. So yes, I hope you girls enjoyed this whipping my longest nails back into shape type tutorial and found it helpful for your natural nail growth journey. Now, I've mentioned some of the premium nail care treats that have gotten the girls long and strong throughout the first half of the test phase. And if you've been looking for some natural nail care goodies to help your nails truly flourish this year, you can shop the latest selection of nail treats available at my online store, Hands by Heritage. Moving forward, you can always find a link to shop the premium nail care products in the description box below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and engaging. Take care 
and happy nail growing. I will see you very soon in the next one.